In 1962, the Concorde became the world's first supersonic aircraft, and President John F. Kennedy issued a call for bids to create the first American supersonic transport. Boeing's 2707 became one of the most ambitious airplane projects in history, beset by political turmoil, skyrocketing prices, and environmental concerns. John F. Kennedy directed the Federal Aviation Administration to prepare a report on the nation's aviation objectives for the next decade. The Federation's new head, Najib Halabi, proposed supersonic transport or SST, a commercial airplane that would transport passengers faster than the speed of sound. Halabi saw this kind of travel as the future of civil aviation. Halabi expressed concerns that the absence of American planes in the market would be a setback. However, President Kennedy, Vice President Lyndon Johnson, and Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara were doubtful about this view. Meanwhile, in November of 1962, the French and British governments announced their plans to build the Concorde, which would be the most advanced civilian aircraft in the world. The introduction of the Concorde project caused alarms in other nations due to Europe's edge in the race for supersonic commercial aircraft. There were even rumors that the Soviets were also working on their own design. Halabi wrote to Kennedy, pleading with him to launch the SST program so that America would not fall behind. Kennedy accepted the challenge and the United States began working on its own supersonic passenger plane. Critics opposed the SST project, although it was supported by the private aircraft sector and the Federal Aircraft Administration. According to the FAA, there will be a demand for 500 supersonic transport aircrafts in the United States by 1990. In a speech at the Air Force Academy, President John F. Kennedy announced the National Supersonic Transport Program. Boeing, Lockheed, North American, Curtis Wright, General Electric, and Pratt and Whitney presented primary designs for the supersonic transport project to the government on January 15, 1964. Boeing filed an entry that was similar to their Model 733 and named it the Model 2707. The airframe was comparable to that of the eventual B1 Lancer bomber and contained alternative fuselage modifications that could boost seat capacity to 227. However, in the down selection process, Boeing and Lockheed were pitted against each other and both companies were asked to submit more detailed proposals before a final decision was made. President John F Kennedy granted the corporations that the government would fund 75% of the program's cost if they could build a competitive alternative to the Concorde. By September 1966, both firms had filed their final bids. However, Lockheed Martin's performance was subpar and the Boeing 2707 was named the winner on New Year's Day. Boeing was involved in a number of groundbreaking projects in the 1960s and 1970s, including the 737 and 747 jumbo jet airlines and the space program. Their top priority, however, was the development of a supersonic transport. The 2707 supersonic passenger airliner had a swing wing and was powered by four General Electric turbojets, giving it 281 kN of thrust and a range of 3500 nautical miles. These specs predicted that the aircraft could attain speeds of up to Mach 2.7 and would have a range of up to 3500 nautical miles. Boeing revised their design to begin manufacturing on time, but discovered issues with a large and inflexible swing wing system. In October 1968, the designers changed to a Delta fixed wing design. which gave a smaller design. Almost a year later, the company began work on a full-scale mock-up and two prototypes, but the aircraft remained too heavy and lacked the necessary range to achieve the Mach 2.7 speed. Furthermore, even though fuel was cheap at the time the 2707 were designed, the aircraft used so much fuel that it couldn't complete the transatlantic flight without refueling. Kip Mitchell, a former chief scientific officer of the Royal Aeronautical Establishment in the 1960s, said that the Boeing 2707 program saw to do too much with the restricted technology. However, when the 1971 recession hit, Boeing found itself in a crisis situation, resulting in the layoff of over 60,000 employees and a complete restructuring of the company. The failed American Concorde was dubbed the plane that almost ate Seattle. 
Due to the high cost and noise, the Federal Aviation Administration prohibited all commercial supersonic flights over land in 1972. Although only 14 Concorde planes were ever built for commercial use, they had a relatively long flight life until the crash in 2000. The Russian Tupolev Tu-144, the Soviet equivalent to the Concorde, was considerably less successful, having only operated 55 passenger flights before being permanently grounded owing to unsurmountable problems. The Concorde was supposed to sell 200 units, but only 14 were actually constructed for commercial service. After many decades, supersonic flight is back on the table in the United States. Lockheed Martin and NASA collaborated to create the X-59 out of scavenged space hardware. As a result, it has entered the moniker Supersonic Frankenstein. Furthermore, the X-59 Quest on quiet supersonic technology is being developed in collaboration with the legendary Skunk Works development program team. It is projected to travel at Mach 1.42 speeds and produce far less noise than its predecessors. This was the story of the Boeing SST-2707 project which almost happened. For more such aviation content, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos on various aircrafts on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.